Hello guys, this is Lucas again, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create uh, your application again from scratch. Uh, given that uh, we already configured everything, we have Heroku installed, Git, and all the other tools, um, and given that you watched all the other videos, this time is going to be a lot faster than before. Um, the reason why we are restarting an application, we are writing it from scratch again after write, writing all this code is it's because um, you know repetition makes the learning process uh, actually much more um, effective <clears throat> and uh, when I learn myself I often repeat um, the tutorials several times uh, it helps me to understand everything because I don't expect to understand everything in the first attempt um, and repeating kind of you know helps to clear um, clear everything especially if you're a beginner uh, so um, uh, so let's start in our terminal I'll create a folder here uh, called people can code so let me cd into that <clears throat> okay and it's empty so let's start by creating new rails application And um, after after the end of this tutorial, <clears throat> we are at uh, you will have a very uh, fresh application ready for testing. Um, that will do one cool thing. We will add a gem called device, and device will handle user authentication. In other words, after today's tutorial, we will have application where users, the new users, can come and create an account and log in log out and kind of interact with our application so something that you expect from pretty much any web application so today we will have it ready um, so okay it's so created an application <clears throat> let's create let's cd into uh, that directory okay we in and we can or already run the server so rails Yes, and and you will see that it will work, and it does. Um, before we proceed, uh, we have um, we have some work to do. So let me open um, this directory. Okay. Great. So we have. This is our new uh, structure. Um, so before we actually start writing on any code, uh, let's let's add some gems here. So we created uh, some uh, some gem file before, and we can reuse that. We can take exactly all of, all the gems that we um, selected for our gem file because we're going to use exactly the same set. <coughs> so. Um, let me just quickly open um, the previous project, one of the previous projects. Well, not this one. Okay. And yeah, so that's that's the set that we can use today and we just replace that you really don't need all those comments here we can kind of delete that um, and uh, we're going to use the latest uh, rails of course 4.01 that has just been released this week um, okay oh actually because we're gonna use Heroku, we're gonna have um, we're gonna have our Postgres file here, so we don't need this uh, SQLite gem here. Yeah, so that should. that should do so 
go back and run bundle install <clears throat> and uh, just in just in case you um, you didn't see this let me just let me just make it a little bit a uh, little bit bigger yeah that should be okay oh sorry we're not running bundle install in the right place okay that was quick um and because we started using rspec and capybara <clears throat> there is some uh, as you remember from our uh, tutorial when we were talking about rspec we need to run the installation for rspec um, so let me just go back to the github page and just preview um, preview all the commands so we just need to run this we can just copy paste that into our shell Okay, that's great and that created a whole bunch of files for us uh, but first of all this whole test we we're not going to use that so we just can safely delete and this is our spec this is where we write our tests and according to our capybara which we also installed a second ago uh, we need to add this little line here into our spec uh, helper just like that uh, and we should be we should be okay oh sorry this line copy bar our spec that's it just like that okay so let's um <clears throat> let's run our r spec just to make sure everything is working and it's working fine there is no tests but at least we see the r spec is functioning um, great so it's probably a good time to um, add it to our git repository git init and uh, git commit initial commit okay oh Okay, that's better. Um, okay, and now uh, we can either choose to push to our remote repository like Bitbucket or GitHub. Uh, and um, but before we do that, we can already uh, add our Heroku application. So Heroku create as let's see, let's see people can code. Well, let's try it without a C. We'll see if that's gonna work. <clears throat> Great. So people can call it the Heroku app.com. It's it's already been created. So let's get push Heroku master <clears throat> and make sure Heroku works before we proceed. Um, because we want this application to be ready up and running so everybody can go and register their account <coughs> after we add device to our application that's going to take a second so in the meantime let's go and visit a page for device device is one of the most popular gems uh, in in ruby a community or Ruby and Rails community uh, it's very very respected and very often used for user authentication uh, so please go to github.com slash uh, platform tech uh, platform formatic uh, slash device just Google device uh, and their documentation is really good uh, and what we're looking for is is getting started right here so all the information we need is right here and let's follow the process okay so this is almost done it's done so let's try and open the page so heroku open and make sure 
everything works as it should. It may take a second or two. Um, sometimes when, when you launch the website to Heroku, it takes a couple seconds to spin off the dyno. Um, it's a free thing, so <laughs> you wouldn't expect um, you wouldn't expect a great performance. Uh, nevertheless, you know, it's sometimes it's a little annoying. So, but that's the price that you pay for the convenience of not having to have to configure everything by hand. Oh, actually, okay. Not sure if it's gonna work because we didn't set the new root. Anyway, <clears throat> that's really not that important. Let's proceed with uh, device. So let's add the gem to our gem file. Okay, we just add it here. And we're gonna run bundle install. And the next step is Rails generate device install. Okay, so when you run this command, uh, once it's done, the device will give you a whole set of instructions that we should carefully follow. So, uh, step one, we need to make sure we have some default um, URL for our mailer. So when mailer, when we're gonna send emails from our Rails application, um, the path, the addresses, the links that we're going to include in those emails have to contain the whole URL. So including, uh, you know, HTTP uh, double slash uh, people can code dot Heroku app dot com or localhost or whatever uh, we choose to uh, the domain to be. So let's um, let's copy this line and go back to our project folder into our config environments we have development production and test these are configuration files uh, for different environments of our application so for example production this is configuration file that Heroku will use development is used for when we run the server on our machine and the test is used for test so let's uh, go into development and just add this line here as our default uh, mailer. Oh, let's put it with other mailer configs. Okay, and localhost is something that we want right now. So if we go to production, and um, in production, where's mailer? Let's just put it. Yeah, let's just put it here. And instead of localhost column 3000, just put HTTP um, people can code dot com. So that will be our default uh, host for URLs sent inside of emails. Okay, so that's that's done. Also, we put in in a test. Okay, just like that, also localhost. Uh, let's go back and look at the point two. Ensure we have defined a root URL to, to go to something. Um, okay, so we need to have our root um, defined. It's probably a good time to create our uh, static pages. Um, so we have at least our homepage, so it doesn't default to um, the uh, standard Rails welcome page. So let's go here and other another tab. Let's generate a controller. Static pages and we give it one action home <coughs> or maybe two. Home and contact. This is the shorthand way of creating controllers with some actions inside. Um, <clears throat> so let's do that and that create a whole bunch of files some test files some helper files uh, we're not going to look into that right now but I encourage you to see what um, generator has just created and we can go into our into our routes file and set our root to 
static pages controller home. Just like that. We can delete this line after we've done it. So we just have a get static pages contact here for the contact page. And our root is now the home page. Great. So that's the second requirement of our device um, met. So let's go to the third one. The third one is ensure you have flash messages. So flash messages are. Uh, when when user um, encounters an error, for example, he tried to log in with incorrect password, the device or our application will try to notify that person, that user, with uh, a flash, what we call flash message. Uh, so right now our, our layout doesn't really have any flash messages because it's a new application, but we can add it and here's some example code. Uh, in which is good for now and we're gonna probably change it a little bit later so let's go into our app uh, views layouts in our application HTML to DRB over our yield we can pass uh, you can pass uh, paste those two lines so there is actually a much more elegant way of, of doing this which I'll show you soon but for now it's perfectly okay so let's save that um, let's save that and go back to our uh, instruction. If you're deploying to Heroku with Rails 2, 3.2 only, you may want to set, well, okay, we don't really need that. We actually, this we want to be set to true. So let's go into our environments uh, production <coughs> and let's make sure that we said assets config assets compile to true okay because we may have some issues with heroku if we don't do that um, <clears throat> and that's it we can also generate the views for device if you want to change them but for now we don't so let's make sure that we can already uh, work with our device so let's uh, restart the server Okay, <clears throat> and we can go to our localhost. Great, so this is our homepage. Uh, we probably want the link uh, here to say login and uh, or register. So let's go back here. Let's go back here and see in our uh, Ray crowds what sort of routes we have at our disposal. Oh, we haven't, okay, so we, we missed some steps. Uh, in our device, okay, we haven't generated the model yet, so we have our, oh, that's, that's, pretty, uh, that's a pretty important step. So right now uh, our device is set up, but we need to create our device model. So we're going to be creating, we're going to be creating users. So the users can come to our website and, and um, device can handle their uh, authentication, their sessions. Um, and we do that by running, let me just keep the syntax here. So rails generate. device and we're gonna say user just like that and you run it and that created a couple files um, the two most important files that we want to look into are just, uh, can close that the two most important files are first user model the whole bunch of stuff here and the migration file and to db migrate right here okay let me just make it a little bit bigger so you can uh, can see clearly okay um, device gives us an ability to um, give our user model 
uh, some superpowers. Uh, for instance, well, database authenticable is, is the function which allows us to save some information about our user into a database and then use that user to um, use that data to make sure that when the user comes, it's the right user by providing some, you know, like a, a email and password to log in. Uh, and by the way, uh, in in Rails applications or any applications, we never save passwords of users. So if, if you come to the website, the way to handle the password is um, that you provide the password and that password is encrypted the minute you click um, register. An application uses a special key to encrypt that uh, password and stores only the encrypted version of it. It cannot reverse engineer you cannot decrypt that uh, key only you can only encrypt it so when the user comes the second time and wants to log in the application will take the his password encrypt it and compare with the encrypted version in the database so this way the you can never tell what the pa original password was even if you uh, if you hack into a database and you steal all the code there is no way for you to tell I mean, no feasible way. It just takes forever to crack uh, all the uh, security features. Um, there is no feasible way to tell what the passwords are. So database authenticable, it really is about uh, using the database. It's pretty fundamental to what we're doing here. We're not gonna change it. Uh, of course, we can allow users to register. So registrable, uh, recoverable, uh, this is for the users to recover their password or reset it. Um, we can allow users to be remembered, as you can see, rememberable, uh, trackable. And that's really about, you know, checking where the user signed in, sign out and etc. Some simple analytics. Uh, and uh, we can also validate uh, the, the presence of all the, uh, all the user attributes. There's other, um, there are other things that we can do with the device. For example, we can uh, make, we can send them email to confirm whether their account is present, like is real or not. Uh, this will require some more settings with the email, uh, which we will also do, but not uh, necessarily right now. Uh, we can lock users after certain um, attempts, send certain number of attempts. It's, everything is configurable from the file I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, they also, after user is inactive for a certain time, we can uh, we can uh, time that out his connection, and also we can use um, we can use Omni auth to uh, authenticate user, and this is very very useful if you want to do um, like a login with Facebook or LinkedIn, because that's what exactly what we're gonna use, and we're gonna do it during this tutorial, but not pretty much later down the track um, for what we need um, user to do the default device settings are great but if you if you for whatever reason you want to change something uh, after you changed it here you also have to go to the migration file and make sure that you uncomment corresponding uh, fields so when you run the migration and that's the next step everything matches so we're not going to change anything. So you can close this file and close the user file and just run the migration. Um, so rake db migrate and rake db test prepare. Okay. I will restart the server just in case. Okay, and let's run rake routes to see what routes we have uh, we can use right now. Okay, so we have a lot more this time uh, and they're all for users except for our static pages, of course. Okay, so you have that many routes for users and we can use them right now. So first one is new user session path. So this is the link we're gonna use to register. Um, 
or we have for example new user registration path this is what we're going to use to register our users so let's go ahead and go to our home page which is static pages home.html.erb right here and make it bigger let's delete this we don't really need that and let's put the links here for user to register register for to start with so let's just link to new user registration path oh sorry oh i need to okay link to register comma and new user registration path so let's save that and go to our home page and we have this link here when we click it it takes us to the form where you can sign up uh, <laughs> you see that we created absolutely no code for this and the device is already uh, is already handling the whole process so let's just try to click sign up button and we see that even it displays all the error messages the email cannot be blank and password cannot be blank so let's create uh, its register so let me just info at stormycloud.net and i'll put my password okay and i can sign up oh i didn't put the matching passwords So the device is already, um, you know, doing all the validations. If the password and password confirmation match, if the email is there, if the email is proper format, and we in, okay, we are registered. And right now we have the user record in the database. Um, okay, so when we register, we probably want to. Um, to log out because after we register it logs us automatically so we want to add this link to um, to log out so maybe sign out should be more appropriate sign out and the path would be destroy user session path okay a method delete okay let's refresh there is a button we click that we sign out successfully great so let's uh, let's add another link to sign in user. Okay, and that would be the link here. Okay, and that would be new user session path. Okay, and if you refresh, we now have three links. The problem is we probably want to show um, register or sign in links to users that are not signed in right now. And we also want to uh, show the sign out link only to those users who are signed in. And we can already do that quite easily actually. If we go to our HTML, we can use um, a method of current user. We can say if current user, and that means if we have current user, and current user means the user that is currently uh, signed in. If current user, then we're gonna display this link to sign out, okay? just like that 
or else we're going to display those two links here. Just like that. And if the current user is logged in, we're gonna we're gonna display his email by welcome um, we're gonna say welcome current user email because right now we have only email um, from the user we don't have his name yet uh, and we just displayed the link to sign out refresh and because we are not signed signed in yet let's sign in info at dot net and great we are signed in and by the way this will disappear if I refresh so let me refresh there you go and we have welcome info at stormycloud.com and we have a link to sign out so we have fully working application where people can sign in and sign out, uh, regist register their account. At the moment, uh, we don't have ability to, or we do have ability to remi remind ourselves a password, but because we don't have our email system configured, it won't work. Uh, so in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And, uh, and that's gonna be the full package and we have our application ready to rock. Uh, so just before, just we can also push it to Heroku. So git add, git commit. And that's going to take a second. Uh, and by, by now, it should work uh, with no issues on Heroku. So let's wait and give it a couple seconds to push to Heroku. Yeah, your um your deployment will become slower over time uh, as as your application grows in size. Uh, so initially, they'll be very quick, just like this one. Heroku open. Voila, and we can register. Oh, we of course have to run migration. Let's not forget about that. Uh, Heroku run rake db migrate. And we don't have to run the test prepare uh, on Heroku, of course, because it's only one database. Okay, we created our users and we can now register. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this video and I see you in the next one.